everybody. Uh, my name is Bede. Um, I'm a student of Vedanta. I'm a student. Uh, my teacher is Swamini Atma Prakashananda. I live in Australia. And I'm having, uh, we're doing a series of conversations on Vedantic practice. And the person I'm talking to is Kevin. Say hello, Kevin. Hello, everybody. Now, what I wanted to uh, talk about today is that we've talked about in the past two conversations, we've talked about We've talked about uh, attitude, and the important point here is that most of the attitudes that become active in us uh, during the day, particularly when things go the way we, the ways that we don't like, or people are doing things we don't like, they are automatic. Uh, they become active in us automatically. So we find ourselves being being sad, or being angry, or being lonely or being superior or or being inferior or being envious or being jealous we have these various attitudes that come active in us and take up all the room and we become these attitudes now all of these attitudes are a product of our psychological past in other words they are built in what swami diamanda calls their built-in reactions that come alive today and because they're built in reactions and they're the, the product of, they're mainly the product of interpersonal forces that, that formed our personality uh, what, when, we were, when we were smaller. Okay? Mm. And they're ways of seeing, but the, the basis of these ways of seeing is not what is happening right now, right here, as it is. The basis of our actions are. Uh, the, the basis of them is a reaction. In other words, past ways of seeing and feeling become active in us and we find ourselves seeing the world in certain ways. We, uh, what also comes active in us is, is the types of thoughts that we've, we've developed about ourselves, other people in the world, constantly becoming active as ways of seeing. Would, would you say that part of that is wanting whatever's happening to be different? Uh, I don't want to, not really, no, what I'm talking about now is just simply the structure of attitudes, that we mm -hmm. have a psychological content. Yeah. Does that make sense? That becomes yeah. active in us today. So we've mm -hmm. got a psychological content that has been formed in us as a result of past events. Mm -hmm. And in the present, these attitudes become active like and like you say particularly when we 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 the the basis of these reactions is non-acceptance of a fact we resist mm. but i just want to go into the fact of that what happens is is that at any one moment these these various attitudes become active active in us and that we literally become those attitudes but the, the result of all of these attitudes, all of these unhappy attitudes and all of these types of conclusions and thinking is the result of past activity, what has been built into us. Hmm. And this is why, this is why uh, in Western psychology, for example, particularly in the writings of Sigmund Freud, that basically human beings are determined. They're determined. Hmm. It's a they are completely determined. So, in one sense, there's no freedom. If it's mm. true that we're completely determined, there is no freedom because what happens is it's like a billiard ball. Someone says something, bang, I become this. Someone does something else, I become that. Or I mm. look. So, what happens is is that when we're looking at ourselves, have you ever have you ever looked at yourself and uh, when you say look at yourself, have you ever thought of thought of yourself in a certain way and then you've had a reaction about what you've thought like oh god i'm an idiot yeah yes i i recall that many times right that is an attitude that's an attitude coming alive in relation to yourself have you ever had the experience where you have an attitude of um uh, of strong dislike for a person Yes, I experienced that. Yep. So what happens is, is that they do something or say something, and suddenly you find yourself being in this attitude. It's like triggered, bang. Mm -hmm. Or yep. maybe maybe you're in a, in a, in, a, in a situation, and then an attitude just suddenly 
comes alive in you and you become uh, feel overwhelmed or highly bored or unhappy about the situation. You ever had that experience? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Now, every human being does. So what's happening is, is that this psychological content, the main point is it's been formed by past events, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, in Western psychology, there are great efforts in terms of psychotherapy of methods to try and rearrange the, the content mm -hmm. so the person can function better. Yeah. Now, in Vedanta, we don't do any of that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, if we, if we were to change the arrangement that, that we see, happen to be, what, what is there, it's only modifying it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's just shifting it around a bit, making it a, trying to shape it a bit better. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, the most important thing in Vedanta is, is in, particularly in terms of the preparation, is that what we're looking at is, is that if we could discover an attitude that is born out of the appreciation of what is, not the psychological past, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, if we could discover an attitude that wasn't based on the past and wasn't mm -hmm. based on the past experiences that we've had and that's formed us, our experiences with people, our accumulation of, of, of past judgments and all of this sort of stuff, if we could actually discover an attitude that was, that was free in that sense, how would that be? I think it'd be transforming. That's exactly right. Because we, what what we want to do is we want to be able to discover an attitude that is not the product of our psychological machinery, which is constantly coming into play. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, so what we have is we have so we have the situation where we, uh, in one sense, psychologically, we are being determined, aren't we? Yeah, but or from what you're saying is based on your your past, your past conclusions or, or, or likes and dislikes that have been formed. Events will you'll react. There'll be a reaction based on them with uh, new in new situations. So you're not necessarily seeing them freshly. No, you're not seeing what's in front of you. You're just simply reacting. Hmm. Okay. Now. So and, and when you react, when you react, you are being an attitude, aren't you? You're being some form, uh, you're being an, an attitude, if, whether even if it's a righteous attitude, an indignant attitude, an arrogant attitude. Does that make mm. sense? The most thing is that what happens is it's just simply triggered. It, 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 it comes unconsciously into operation. You don't decide mm. beforehand what attitude you're going to have. It just something happens and out pops this attitude. You suddenly find yourself being an attitude. And by being an attitude, you mean it's it's a way of saying completely. It's a it's a it's a it's an I sense. It's a sense mm -hmm. of myself built around a way of seeing. Yes. Mm. All right. Yeah. And it's it's not um, it's not and and we just simply become enclosed in them. Okay. So mm. in one sense, we're caught, we're actually, what Swami Dayananda says, we're full of ourselves. <laughs> we're, we're, we're living in our own world. Mm. So the world we're living in has been completely determined by or coloured by, does that make sense? Yeah. The, 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 the particular psychological reaction that happens to be predominant in any particular moment. Hmm. And that attitude will still feel right to the person. To other people, um, they'll, they'll think that person's reacting, but the person who's having <laughs> that reaction, he feels it's, he's quite right, at, or he or she feels they're quite right at that moment. Fundamentally, we always feel we're seeing reality in the right way. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a rule. Whenever you have an argument, this is a very good point you bring up is that we always feel that the way we're seeing life 
is right. Even an angry person thinks he's saying he's being completely objective. Yes, he thinks that he thinks he's looking at reality as it is. This person is a is a rotter, a terrible person, and they are deserving of all forms of punishment. Mm, yeah. mm. Despite the fact that other observers to these events can think that the persons are being quite irrational. That's right, because within ourselves, we always feel exceedingly rational. We, all, <laughs> we always feel right. Now, the interesting thing too here is I want to say is that, is that we're constantly chopping and changing. Did you know that? Like, isn't it true? Like one moment we're a bit bored, the next moment we're irritated, then we're angry, then we're sad, then we're lonely. Chop, chop, chopping and changing constantly. Constantly, we're like a different person. Mm. Then the person who actually says, uh, tomorrow I'm going to get up and do some exercise, the, ne the person who wakes up is different. I want to stay in bed. <laughs> yes. Have you ever noticed that? Yep, and sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm frustrated, all that sort of stuff. So, there's, no, there's no sameness, is there? No. So there's this constant, in, in one sense, it's like we become different people. Mm. Different attitude comes. So when you're with, with one person, you're like this. When you're with another person, you're like this. And when you're another, you know, it all chops and changes. The attitudes constantly are constantly changing. And you mm. have no, absolutely no control over this. Mm. <laughs> okay? Yeah, sounds a bit of a worry. Well, <laughs> this happens to be a fact. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and... That one of the problems is this, is that the important part is that, is that the attitude that we are in determines how we act. Mm. This is very important. The attitude mm. that we are in determines how we act. How we are, how we're being. Yeah, what we're doing, yeah. Because mm. what we do is what has consequences. Mm. Mm. What we do and how we do it has profound consequences in our life. Mm, mm. Like if you talk to if you if you just say to someone hi how are you, that's going to have a consequence, isn't it? Yes. You see, what goes on the scoreboard is our actions, what we do and how we do it. Mm. And the interesting thing is, mm. the interesting thing is, is that we're not like Western psychology in the sense that we're saying, oh, the present behaviour has been caused by the past. We we mm. what we're saying is is. Given the attitude you're in, you dramatize it. Mm, mm. So the unconscious, inverted commas, is actually right here, right now. Mm, mm. In us, and we live it out. Yeah. Manifesting as an angry person, a dissatisfied person, a frustrated person or, or whatever, we're being those, those, those attitudes. Yes. Yeah, mm. this is what we are at any one moment. Mm. Okay, now, because we're caught in our, in our world, right? Because we're enclosed mm -hmm. in our world, that's what Swami Dayananda says, we're full of me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Full of me, myself, I, and be. I'm very familiar with that. Okay, yes. now, it's... We're actually, we're actually, in one sense, cut off. In alien, we're in a condition of alienation from what is. Mm. We're living in what Swami Dayananda calls a private world. Mm. Well, I'm hoping there's an alternate, babe. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, this is where it gets interesting. In the West, we tend to start with the individual and we start with this person here and we're looking at his, you know, all the psychological processes, all the defense functions and all of this stuff. Mm. And we try and do something about it mm. by various methods of psychotherapy or counseling mm. or whatever. Okay? Yeah. And, and because... And our starting point is this, is the, is, is the, it's inside the individual because we believe the mind's the problem. Mm, mm. Okay? Now, Swami Nayananda has got a very, very interesting principle here. Mm -hmm. Is that when you come into contact with reality as it is, when you have the right relation to reality, 
you become right. <laughs> That's a big statement. And we're going to we're going to talk about this. It, 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 what we're going to be talking about now is we're going to. I don't really know yet how we're going to approach this, Kim, but we're going to sort of talk in and around it and sort of feel our way in. All right? Yeah. yeah. But basically, basically, what what the most important, uh, what they call in it, the epistemological issue. This is the issue of knowing, appreciating mm -hmm. what is, becoming what he, what Swami Dayananda calls alive to facts. Mm -hmm. What's important is at any one moment is what are we looking at? What what is in front of us? Yes. Yeah, All right. Because yeah. often what happens is what I think is in front of us is I think there's an idiot in front of me. Mm. Or I think what I'm facing is that life is a terrible thing. Mm. Or I'm uh, when you're saying that, you're saying you're saying you're not thinking there's an idiot in front of you. You're experiencing an idiot in front of you. You've got no doubt about that. Yes, that's right. We, we, we're not aware of our assumptions or thoughts. We just experience life as we experience life. We assume that our experience of life is what is. We think it's being. We think we're being objective. Yes, we, we, I'll go into what we mean by objective a little later. But we we think that we are seeing what is. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Like based on experience, our exp we trust our experience of ourselves. We trust that mm -hmm. that's true. We trust mm -hmm. that our experience of others is true, and we trust mm -hmm. that the experience of our, the world is true. Mm -hmm. We don't. Even, that is our primary assumption. We base on experience. We base, uh, 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 we, and we can't do anything else actually. But we base our, our, our understanding of life on our experience. How mm -hmm. I experience life is the way life is. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, yeah. in, comes, in comes Vedanta. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what it says is that your experience is not true. It's an experience. It doesn't deny the experience. Mm -hmm. It says that the, that, that it basically says is that, yes, the experience of suffering is real as an experience, mm. but it's not true. Mm. Okay. Another example, I think, of this topic area is, you know, we see the sun rise in the east and it sets in the west, and that's our experience, and that, that experience is... is um, you know, we're not denying the experience, but it's not actually what happens. It's the fact that the, the earth is revolving on an axis. That's right. It's, a, it's the famous difference between what seems to be and what really is. Mm. And what, what, uh, what the study of Vedanta is, is it, it, it looks at what seems to be, mm. and it doesn't deny what seems to be because that's the starting point. This is where we start. Yeah. We seem to be... We seem to be an individual who is suffering. Mm, mm. But what we really are may be something entirely different. So it do, in that sense, it doesn't deny the experience of, of seeing or, or hearing, but no. it's, it's, it sort of has a different, is a different understanding, is a different understanding of what's actually, what that actually means. Yes, we look at what we do is we look at our experience. We don't deny experience, but we look at our experience under the right light, mm, mm. under the light of Vedanta. You know the word mm. understanding? The word, the English word understanding? Uh, you, can you, yes, please tell me. It means standing under. So when, mm -hmm. we're, so when we're standing under the light of Vedanta, mm -hmm. we are understanding. Mm-hmm. In other words, we are seeing the experience in a different light. Mm, mm. Because experience, just simply as it automatically unfolds, is extremely hypnotic. Mm. I, sometimes, I sometimes are under the sway of the experience, where I actually, the experience is, people are upsetting me. They are annoying me. Mm. And I believe it. Yes. 
But in the light of Vedanta, when I when I'm looking at that experience in the light of Vedanta, mm-hmm. what happens is is that no people and things don't hurt me. They're only instrumental in revealing a pain or self dissatisfaction that's already here. It's an entirely different light, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And so what happens is you always have this dialectic between what you, what seems to you to be true mm. and what the teaching is telling us. Mm. Now, mm. we don't deny, we definitely don't deny our experience because that's our starting point. Yes. In terms of our practice, right now I'm unhappy. Good, now let's, now let's begin. Mm, mm. We don't say, I'm not really unhappy, I'm the self. We don't do that ridiculous things like that. Mm, mm. What we do is we, first of all, acknowledge fully and honestly, right now, right here, as I am, I am enclosed in misery. Mm, mm. The great thing is, though, is that the wisdom tells me this misery is centered on me. Mm -hmm. It is not the result of other people. It is not the result of of situations it is the result of me being my suffering Mm. so that's an example of looking at our experience in the right light Mm. so suddenly i'm no longer looking at it from the meaning of the experience is different now isn't it Mm. So, some some people m- might say, well, it, it was the event that triggered it. That, 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 well, they will definitely, you know, well, the event has, the event, yes, it's, it, the, when you see, you've got to, we use that fairly loosely. What happens is the event happens. And mm. what, see, psychologically what happens is this. We look at an event, Right. And then yeah. it's associated in the mind with previous events that have happened in the past. Mm. And then through that association, a reaction is evoked. Mm. Does that make sense? Uh, but yeah. what happens is, is that what Swami Dayananda says, all the senses can do is just give you information. Mm. Mm. They don't do anything else. What you're mm. looking at is just information. Mm. But what happens is is that that happens, and then suddenly I am this. Mm. So, in the example of where someone's you know someone has done a act in a way which was you feel as unfavourable or unkind to you. Yes. Um, you're saying that the the source of the unhappiness isn't the that. That of a that, that of a person's behaviour, it's something. It's it's revealing an unhappiness that's already with you. Yes, we don't deny the fact that people do unpleasant or or unkind acts. Mm. But we're mm. not we're not we're not doing some Pollyanna Pollyanna type spiritual thing. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Mm. Mm. People do people do act exploitively, dishonestly. And 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 in in unhelpful ways, we all do this. Mm, mm. Right? Now, we don't deny that, but what we're saying is, is that, is that when events happen, we become something in relation to those events, and that mm. being the unhappiness in relation to those events is our problem, not the event itself. Hmm. Mm. So it's our attitude or reaction to that event that's the problem. It is our be- well, no, it's not the attitude. It is our being the attitude. Yes. So mm. long as we understand when we say attitude, we are being the attitude. Mm. I am unhappy. Mm. Is the problem. And so that's quite different from having a being angry is different from having an angry thought. Yes, what happens in the West, we objectify the anger. We say, I've got a problem with anger. Mm. So we've got this external thing called anger that's, yeah. that's uh, um, afflicting me. Mm. Mm. That's why Dianana says you are being the anger. And, and when you're being that anger, that attitude, 
everything conforms to that. Yes. The sports, the, the yes. physiological high blood pressure, yes. feeling hot under the collar, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, man, it, manifests in, in, it manifests in a way that's consistent with the attitude. Mm. But the thing is, is that the thing is, is that it's very important. You see, the, the reason it's important to understand that I am the one that's suffering and the location of the suffering is me, it's only from here that I can shift. Mm. Mm. If I, if I, if I, if I, if I think that the suffering exists in your hands, then I'm going to obsessively try and change you. Which is what we, Mike, that's what we normally try to do, isn't it? That's right. We, don't, we, wait. we cannot possibly have the access to the solution unless we understand thoroughly that we are the problem, that we mm. are being the suffering. Because uh, being a way of seeing which is the problem. Yes. Mm. Mm. Does that make sense? So that, so, so that our way of seeing is the problem, yes. Mm. Which is yeah. our way of being. Yeah. The, the, the same, actually. Mm. Mm. As we, we see as we be. You know, sorry, we, we be as we see. We know. Mm. Yeah. All right? Now, mm. so... What we're looking at here, isn't it? It's interesting. We're looking at now our experience in the light of the teaching. All right? Mm. Now, yeah. what this is, is that we're using Vedanta as a way of seeing. Does mm. that make sense? We're using Vedanta as a way of seeing. Yeah. And this is what Vedanta is. It's a way of seeing. It is not a philosophy. Mm. It's, not mm. a, it's not a spiritual theory. It's not a religious belief. It is actually mm. a means of knowledge. It is a way of becoming acquainted thoroughly with what is. Mm. Mm. So when you say it's a means of knowledge, it's like you're saying, well, the eyes are a means of knowledge for seeing, ears for hearing, mm -hmm. and Vedanta is a means of knowledge in words, giving a, ton, a context to, to understand everyday experiences in a different light. Yeah, it uses words as a mirror. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. Swami Dayananda, what would happen, you'd be sitting there, you'd be listening to him, and you started just simply to see as he saw. Mm -hmm. So you weren't looking, you weren't, you see, he said that a good teacher is, is one who can, can, can use words without forming a conceptual construct in the mind of the student. Mm -hmm. Now what, hap what that means by that is that when you listen or read Vedanta, we're not gathering theories and ideas. Mm -hmm. what, what happens is a mirror is presented to us in which we can see our life. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I'm upset with my wife. I'm having the experience that she's causing me upset. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly what becomes active in me is the teaching because I've, giving it, I've been giving the teaching attention and, and been dwelling on it. It comes active in me this way of saying, no, no, no. It's not my wife. This is my self-dissatisfaction being revealed in this situation. And mm. this is my problem. The problem is located with me. Because you're wanting, you're, in, the, in this example, you're, you're, you're wanting your wife to be, to be different. You're true, but I don't, I, what I'm saying, no, no, I'm, I'm saying that what's happened is, is that I'm just talking about the fact that what happens is, is that we're seeing a situation in a certain way. We're having an experience. Yeah. When the teaching becomes active in us as a way of seeing, we are seeing that experience in a different way. Mm. We're yeah. seeing it in an entirely different light. Mm. Now, mm. when we are seeing our experience in the light of Vedanta, we are using the means of knowledge, aren't we? Mm. We are seeing. Like when we use our eyes, we see color and form, don't we? Mm. Well, when we when we use Vedanta, we mm. use Vedanta when we when we are seeing our life in the light of it. 
Mm. Otherwise, we don't use Vedanta. The only thing that verifies Vedanta is 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 is, is itself. I I mm. see clearly that no, my wife isn't my problem. I the problem is centered on me. Now, the mm. very fact that that can become active in me as a way of seeing is extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Pre it previously wasn't available. No. You were, previously, you always thought the, your, the unhappiness was because of some actions or of your, of your why. Yes, or mm. other people. Yeah. Because we go by experience. Hmm. So what now, happened? Yeah. You, you, were, you were saying that the you, you, it's not your wife that's causing in this example. You're, not, you're saying it's not your wife that's causing the unhappiness. It's it's the fact that it's revealing. It's the unhappiness is due to a, a self dissatisfaction that's already there. Um, yes. What, I, yeah, what I'm saying is is that it's an extraordinary thing that when we're caught up in an experience when the teaching becomes active in us in, in a way of seeing, the mm -hmm. experience is transformed. Mm -hmm. Because we're no longer seeing the problem with the other person. We're seeing the experience in the light of the teaching. Mm -hmm. so I just want to emphasize the fact of this way of seeing that can become active in us. Yeah. It's what, it's what they call a means of knowledge, that Vedanta is a means of knowledge. Mm, mm. Okay? And, so, and what it does is it opens us up to ways of seeing that we had no, uh, that, that just never occurred. So instead of, mm. instead of like the eyes open up color and form, right? Mm. What Swami Dayananda does and what our teacher does is she basically unfolds meanings mm that we can see in our life, mm. we can see. Mm. I just, just based on what you were just saying about the unhappy, you know, the actions of, in the example of your, your yep. wife, you know, initially we think my wife or your husband is making me unhappy. Which is a way of seeing. But, and so that's what we think, but then in the light of Vedanta, we can suddenly think, well, well no, Vedanta says it's, it's only, only it's, um, it's revealing an unhappiness that's already there. As soon as you become conscious of that, that's already oh, that you're doing something to be unhappy, to, to, you're actually doing something to be unhappy. Like it stops you being this, that mechanical reaction. Well, it? Chris, you know, you're not doing anything to become unhappy. You find yourself being unhappy. Mm. And when you appreciate the fact, when you're actually ab abiding in the appreciation of the fact that this suffering belongs to me, this mm. suffering is me, it's located with me, when you actually appreciate that fact, you stop blaming. Mm. Mm. If you have it as an idea, as a concept, you'll still be angry. Mm. You'll go, mm. yeah, I know it's my problem, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, the effect of knowledge is, is that when you, when it is active in you, this is, the, with, all, this is with all of Vedanta, when you're actually seeing what is happening, there is a change of your being. If there's no change in the way you are being, it means that Vedanta is not working. It's not being done. Mm. Where Vedanta always results in a change of being. It that's how it, that's how it validates itself. Mm. It, with it, because it transforms our experience. It's what our Swamini says is that what experience can teach us is is how well we've ascertained the vision. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. I'm upset with you and blaming you and thinking that you're a horrible person and all of that stuff, right? And I feel mm. I'm looking at reality. I feel I'm seeing what is. Mm. And it seems to be that I'm seeing what is. Mm. But in actual fact, what Vedanta shows us is that, is that that's what seems to be, but what really is. And what's the most important thing in Vedanta is the pursuit of knowledge. In other words, the pursuit of recognizing 
very clearly what is and abiding in that appreciation while we're living. So here I am, I'm upset with you, I'm mm -hmm. caught up, I'm, I'm angry, I'm blaming you, then suddenly through an act of grace, this way of seeing that, 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 that came alive in me and when I was listening to my teacher comes alive in me right now, right here as I am. Mm. Now, when it does, suddenly I change. I cease to be a blamer. I'm still enclosed in the, in the suffering, mm. but, uh, but the wisdom is telling me what this suffering is. This is located with me. So what I want to emphasize here is, is that when we talk about a means of knowledge, we're not talking about, this isn't a psychological theory. See, I once, mm. when I studied psychology, I wanted the, the best explanation, the, the truest explanation of, of what we do and how we work and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. An explanation. I wanted the right theory. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Swami Dayananda didn't actually unfold a theory of psychology. He unfolded what our psychology is. <laughs> that's a big statement. Yeah, that's right. So when I'm so here, here it is. I'm upset with you. I'm upset with you. And but but right here, right now, as I am, what comes active in me is a way of seeing. Mm. And this way of seeing is Vedanta. Mm, mm. It is Vedanta. Mm. And so I suddenly, ah, here I am, I'm suffering this, all this event with my, my spouse or uh, my friends or whoever it is that I'm upset with, all this is just simply a revelation of my self-dissatisfaction. It's a revelation of something that I, that I am. Does that make sense? That I mm. that, that this upset or, or pain, this and this transforms my experience. Now mm. I can only say that I actually am seeing this if I stop blaming. Yes. See so if I if I'm really seeing this, I don't even feel like blaming. Mm. I go, oh, <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> mm. Can you can you explain a bit more about the self dissatisfaction? Because I think um, sometimes I think we don't like to see that it's our that we are unhappy. We, well, we like to well, we, whenever we're in an unhappy state of mind, we're unhappy with ourselves. We're unhappy with the way we are being. Mm. Like when I'm angry, I don't like being angry. Do we like being angry? No. So I'm unhappy with the way I'm being. What about lonely? I'm unhappy with the way I'm being lonely. Mm -hmm. It's a what Swami Dayananda says. This is the basic. We we suffer from this basic self dissatisfaction. We don't we don't we don't like being ourselves. And then and we and and we and our whole life is built around trying to control the world and others so I can feel good in myself. When you say that we don't like being ourselves, is that because of a, a, a wrong understanding of ourselves? Yes, but I, I, don't, I, I want to talk about the fact of the suffering at the moment. I don't want to go into the, the basis of the suffering. Mm. Fact, let's stick with, can we stick with the experience of ourselves as an individual? I'm unhappy and I don't mm. like being unhappy. Mm. So, so there is a premise there. I am unhappy. It is, yes. There is a premise as there's a notion about myself. That the, oh, the, only reason, the only reason I did that is because I don't want people to think that we're saying you're, 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 people don't like being themselves. They're always going to be unhappy. And there's no, oh, no solution. No. But that's why I've said that. So I don't want people to think that. No, no. So what we're, what we're doing is, is that there is a premise here. I am unhappy. So I'm taking yep. myself, my being, to be the unhappiness. Mm. Now, that's what it seems to be. That's the seems to be we're caught in. Yeah. Now, there, what really is is something actually quite different. But, but what I want to start with is that because that's the premise, mm. I'm not happy, anything that makes me feel happy, which I feel gives me the experience of being happy, becomes inordinately important. 
Mm. So I try to overcome this unhappiness by with people and things, don't I? Yeah. In general, I think we, you know, we believe our happiness is in people and and things, but um, but if uh, and further in the light of Vedanta, we find that you know, do do you do you like your your car because of the car or for your sake? The way Swami Dayananda says it is that I want a car so so I, I want a car so that I can get from A to B. I want a car so I can feel good about myself. Mm, That's mm. the distinction. Now can we just get back to this means of knowledge thing? All yeah. right? Because we, given that we find ourselves being unhappy, we, we need to be able to see our experience in the right light, don't we? Mm-hmm. But what's most important is, is we, what we need to do is, well, okay, here I am. I'm actually unhappy, right? I'm mm-hmm. close in unhappiness. Yep, I am. Yep. Okay, now what? Mm-hmm. You see, we need to be able to resolve this. And the, the resolution is, is that there has to be a shift in attitude, doesn't there? Mm-hmm. Because any form of unhappiness is an attitude. Is that right? Yeah. So I am. It's a way of seeing. Yeah. It's a way of seeing, which is a way of being. Mm -hmm. So I'm being unhappy. Yeah. Right? Which is the same way as saying I'm seeing my life in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like when, when when a person when a person comes in for for psychotherapy or counseling, they say, I'm just so miserable. Mm. I'm so miserable. Mm. And they're very unhappy about that. They're dissatisfied with that. Mm -hmm. So they're taking themselves to be the misery and they hate it being like that. Yeah. Okay, that is universal. Now, Mm. what Swami Dayananda says is that this is universal. Every human being, consciously or unconsciously, suffers from this. And in Mm. order to solve it, he, he, he says his definition of samsara is the dependence on people and things in order to be happy. The pursuit mm. of trying to get people and things to make ourselves happy. Mm. Okay? Now, but the important point that I want to bring you out here is, is, that, is that we want to be able to see what is. Is that true? Yeah, that would be and, good. Yeah, so what, what Swami Dayananda says is that to be able to see what's in front of us, to be able to see reality, that he says that when we are actually seeing reality as, of, as it is, right, mm. then the presence of reality has come into our mind, hasn't it? Mm. Mm. Implicitly. Yeah. Now, so when you look at the presence of reality, right, Yeah. his starting point uh, in terms of, of, of the human being is the presence of reality, not the human being as they appear to be. In the West, we start with the, 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 the individual entity, the isolated entity. How the person's feeling. Yeah, and what they are and what they're thinking, right? Yes. Now, what Swami Dayananda does is he unfolds a vision of what every, uh, that includes everything. Mm-hmm. Now, what's very interesting here is that what he looks at is he says it, it, what, what's important is when I'm looking at anything, whether it's a thought, whether it's uh, other people, whether it's circumstances, what is it that I am looking at? Mm. Does that make sense? Now, I know what I think I'm looking at. I'm looking at this, this person who's, who's, who's a rotter because they've, they've, they've robbed me or, or I'm looking at life, which is very harsh. You know what I mean? Like, do you see mm-hmm. what I mean? I've got different... I have private views about this, haven't I? Yeah. Now, what he says is that the most fundamental thing about life is is that everything that we're looking at is the presence of reality in particular forms. Mm. Everything we're looking at is the presence of reality. Mm. Okay? So we're looking at... Now, is the presence of reality an abstraction, Kevin? Well, 
What do you mean by abstraction? Okay, is it a theory? Is the presence of this book I'm looking at, is that a theory or is, is the presence of reality in the form of a book? No, the presence of reality in the form of a book. So when you tree. look at, yep, on trees, birds, sounds. So the presence of reality is in the form of all of these various things, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, what, he, what uh, Swami Dayananda unfolds now is, is not, he, 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 he unfolds what everything is. Now, what I want to say here is this. He's not unfolding a philosophical assumption about God. Mm-hmm. He's, not, he's not unfolding a cosmological theory. Cosmology is to do with the nature of, re, of, of, of rea, you know, reality of, of the cosmos. Mm. He's not unfolding a religious belief. Mm-hmm. What, is, what he's doing is he's unfolding a way of seeing the world and mm. everything in it. Now, this is not, this can't, it's not, it's not, it's not scientific. Mm. It's simply, he unfolds a way of seeing reality mm. and What's important for the human being is, is that when you are seeing the world like this, Mm -hmm. you change. Mm -hmm. This is the important thing. So he's unfolding a meaning. He's unfolding a way of seeing the world, which when it becomes active in you, you become transformed as an individual. In other words, your attitude undergoes a transformation. Hmm. Can you give an example of this? Okay. Now, what he does is, it's not so much an example. What, what he's saying is, is that the presence of reality, now in, 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 the, in the West, we are mainly uh, dominated by sci- what we call scientific materialism. Mm-hmm. But we say that everything, everything we're looking at is just bundles of, of matter and energy. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so basically what you are is you're a, a complex form of matter and energy. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And your, your aliveness is just simply a, a, an epiphenomena, just a... It goes a, a lot, It goes along with the functioning of that, of all of the moving parts. Mm. Does that make sense? So you have the same state. Your child has the same status as a cup. Sounds a bit silly. Yes, but that's the that is the view, right now. So when you when now the Vedic vision of reality is entirely different. Mm. So. Whereas in the West, we, there's a very strong dominance of the fact that when we're, we're, all we're looking at is matter and energy, that's somehow mm. intelligently arranging itself. Mm. Does that make sense? And yeah. everything is matter. Mm. So the, the, the meaning of everything is matter. Mm. Mm. And this matter and energy is 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 actually it, there's energy in its in its condensed form it's matter you know like you know when you've got a, a a wheel going around real fast yes it appears solid but it's actually a movement of energy so we're looking at what we're looking at is energy do you know what i mean mm. that, that when you're looking at a physical object it's condensed it's condensed motion if you like right now mm-hmm. but that's all it is it's matter there's no life Life is just simply an experience that sort of happens along with this movement. So when you've got a human being, you've got a complex arrangement that's functioning. It's functioning matter and energy. And Mm -hmm. out of that functioning of matter and energy comes what we call consciousness. Mm -hmm. And when that functioning goes, part of the, the consciousness was just part of that functioning. So all a human being is, is you're, we're only looking at, we're only looking at basically energy and matter. From a, what you call it, from a scientism point of view. Now that, you know, it's interesting what you say, scientism. There's nothing wrong with the scientific method, but scientism is the philosophy 
that a lot of scientists, though some are, are denying this, some are, some counter this, but they fundamentally they're what we call scientific materialism. Mm. All you've got is you've got mat matter and energy in space, right? Mm. Operating in space through time. Mm. These are the change, and that's time. So you've got matter, matter, which is solid stuff, mm. <laughs> which is mm. different, operating in space mm. according to time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Okay? Yeah. And it, all of it, and, and, and what was assumed, of course, is that, that this universe started in a certain time, so time's considered. Uh, and it's not considered, it's, it's considered uh, that's always there. It started in time and space, and everyone's thinking, how does it start in time and space? Does that make sense? The Big Bang and mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? Where mm -hmm. from the Vedantic point of view, everything that you're looking at is the presence of reality in the form of matter, energy, space, and time. Mm -hmm. so it's, and and the, the, it's a manifestation. It didn't start somewhere. It's always mm. been here as a possibility. It manifests and then goes back. Mm. And space and time are also a manifestation of it. Mm. They're, they're mm. Part of the manifestation. Because you can see them. They're an object of awareness, aren't they? Yes. They're an appearance. Now, mm. so fundamentally when we look at the universe, whether we like it or not, We've been greatly affected, haven't we, by, by scientific materialism? I think so, yeah. The Indians haven't been so much, you know what I mean? They're lucky in that regard, but we have really been, because the, the, our religious forms have disintegrated and basically there's nothing here but matter and energy operating mm. in space through time. And, yes. and that, that what, what we're looking at does that make sense? Is this is all we're looking at? This is what we're yeah. seeing. So it's a way of seeing, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Okay. Now, the extraordinary thing of the, the 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 vision of Vedanta, and particularly the way that Swami Dayananda unfolded it, is this: that the whole universe, including space and time, is an appearance. Mm. It comes. It 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 it's it's it's, it's, it, the, the, it, is, it is the presence of reality in the form of trees, cars, concrete roads, birds, people, thoughts, and feelings. But the important point is it's the presence of reality in the form of all of those things. Mm. Now he's not presenting this he's not presenting this as a theory. As, a, as, a, as something to be believed. Mm. What he's saying is, is that what, you're, what you are looking at at any one moment is the presence of reality. Mm. And what more importantly, he says, and once you appreciate this, once you're appreciating what is in front of you as this, you change as an individual. Mm. So I'm going to go into. Are we clear so far? So we're not talking about yeah. we're not talking about a theory. We're talking mm -hmm. about a way of seeing that can come alive in us. A way of seeing, and this way of seeing couldn't possibly come alive in us without a, 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 a teacher such as uh, our teacher or Swami Dayananda unfolding. It's unfolding a vision. Mm, it's a vision. Mm. So the, the Vedic vision of God or reality, that in, in, in Vedanta is a synonym, right? Mm -hmm. what, what the, it, it is a vision which we can abide in. This sounds interesting. It's a way <laughs> of seeing. Now, in order to understand this, and when I say understand this, appreciate this as a fact, Right, mm -hmm. he he says two very important things about this reality, which is appearing as everything. Mm -hmm. Now it's funny, isn't it, that everyone, everyone, even atheists, say, "Well, everything's real." <laughs> we would agree. Yeah. 
Everything is, mm. everything is reality. Okay? Yeah. The first thing is that, so reality, right? Reality, mm. uh, every appearance is reality, but reality isn't every appearance. It's like every wave is water, but water isn't every wave, because if water was every wave, when the waves disappeared, so would the water, which, of course, it doesn't do. So mm. what we're talking about is that, is that this reality, right, this reality mm. is present, always present in the form of what is. Mm. Okay? And what Swami Dayananda says that this reality is the material cause of the universe. Okay? Mm. Now, I want to explain that, right? Yeah. You know how, you know how Swami Dayananda talks about a clay pot? Yeah. Okay. So what you've got is you've got the presence of a pot, you've got the presence of clay in the form of a pot, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, is the clay pot on the clay? No, the pot is the the pot is the clay. Right? Is it is 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 there some kind of transcendental, transcendent, uh, kind of clay behind the pot? I don't think so. I think it's just clay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, the the pot is clay. Now, what mm. what the teaching is this, and this is a very important thing, that. Just similarly, just like the, the, the pot is, 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 is the presence of clay in the form of a pot, mm. everything we are looking at is the presence of reality in the form of what we're looking at. So the presence of God or the presence of reality is not somewhere else. Mm. And the word that we give for what we're looking at is the given. Mm. Now this is this is the most extraordinary for me. This was the most extraordinary thing. I mean, I I, I had great difficulty with it. I mean, I I spoke to my Swami just about every day for six to eight months about this mm. <laughs> particular issue, but because I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to know about this. But what is is that the very presence of the given, right at the moment? Mm. What's the given? There's you, and there's the, there's this table, and my voice, and so the very presence of the given is the presence of the giver. Now, this is an extraordinary fact that's unfolded, that God is no longer or reality is no longer somewhere else. You no longer have to reach him because he's in some other world. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That right here, right now, the fact can be appreciated that the very presence of the given is the presence of the giver. Mm. So, um, without some sort of practice of what this this means, it it it, it, it may not mean. Um, it, it'd be difficult to understand this, really. Now, well, think. first of all, now, first of all, what happens is you listen to the teacher, and see this is this is this is what they mean by it's a means of knowledge. What happens is this way of seeing, this way of seeing can become alive in us. Mm. Now, the the important point here is that is that this is a fact to be appreciated. It is, it is not, it's not something that one day I'm going to see it. Mm. This is basically right now, right here as I am, I can abide in the appreciation of this fact. Mm. Mm. Now, when I, like, when, when I, when I first heard this, I, I just found this, I was flabbergasted because I was part of a Christian Judaic tradition. Do you know what I mean? The, yeah. the reality of God or whatever was somewhere else. You know what I mean? Outside space and time and, um, you know, removed, if you like. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. Right. So what I did was I thought, okay, now, what, what 
in order to appreciate this thing is we have to then start to, you know how we're talking about using Vedanta as a means of knowledge? Yeah. When that, my eyes are blindfolded, unless I've had an operation and they take the blindfold, there's a, there's a, uh, I've heard Swami Dhanan talk about the story. The guy's got his eyes closed and he's had the operation and the surgeon says, well, can you see? And he says, I don't know whether I should open my eyes I'm not sure whether I will be able to see it. And the surgeon says, well, when you start using your eyes, you'll know whether or not they work. Mm -hmm. So the same way, what you do is, is that there is, in, in, instead of using faith or a belief in an idea, Swami Dayananda has, has a, it's got a, a Sanskrit word, but I'm not going to use it. But what he says is, you suspend judgment pending discovery. Mm. Okay, now we're basically... Sus we're, you said, you said sus suspend judgment pending discovery. Yes. Okay. So we're not going to, because like I said to you, implicitly we're materialists. Mm. Like it or not, we've got judgments about that, right? Mm. So what happens is, is that when I first heard this, what I do is I'd go for a walk, you know, and I'd suspend my judgments and I'd say, okay, let's just see whether I can appreciate this. So here's this tree, the presence of the tree. And what I would do, I'd just simply receive the presence of the tree into my mind. Does that make sense? So it took up all the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was looking at the tree in the light of the teaching. Does that make sense? That, yeah. the, that the presence of this tree is the presence of reality in the form of a tree. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do it with trees and birds. You know, Swami Dayananda said, you know, start with nature. You know what I mean? But, yeah. And what happened was, was an extraordinary thing. That when, first of all, when I receive the presence of the given, which is the presence of the giver, mm. and it would come in and take up all the room, I would disappear as an unhappy, disgruntled person. Mm. Mm. Isn't that extraordinary? In other yes. words, when I, the way, you see, Swami Dayananda says the way that you invite God into your life is by being aware of him. That's how mm. God becomes part of your life. That's how reality becomes part of your life. So this another example of this is, you know, which I think many people have experienced when they see a beautiful landscape or a beautiful sunlight, yeah. uh, sunset, mm -hmm. um, the this dissatisfied person, the wanter, disappears. Yes, you myself, no, not that, not that. I myself as a dissatisfied person and wanter disappears. Yes, yes. And you don't want it to, you don't, you're not wanting it to be any different? Yes, but you, basically what happens is you find that because, you see, it's very important, there is a, when you receive the presence of the given into your life, you're receiving it, right? Mm. You, as it is, you become relaxed in yourself. Hmm. Now, this is extremely important because what happens is you become relaxed in yourself as yourself as a simple conscious person. And what's interesting is you become conscious because you are filled with your mind is filled of the presence of reality. Mm, mm. You know, it's not like you I'm now going to become conscious. No. And if, and if, and if that isn't the experience of... Um, a person then they're not really looking at the tree that they're thinking about it now this is the point when we're appreciating the presence of reality like our swamini says you must fill your life with the presence of ishvara mm. when you are appreciating the presence of ishvara you cannot help but be relaxed in yourself as yourself if you're not relaxed in yourself as yourself you are not appreciating the presence of this body. You've used a new word there, Pete, Ishra. Can you explain that? Oh, well, I've explained that in another, in another talks of hell. It's just a okay. synonym for God. Hmm. In fact, Swami Dayananda says that we should use the word Ishvara before we use the word God because of the connotations, that, the, the wrong connotations of it. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. So, yeah. so what happens is, is that, is that when... When you, um, 
when you invite the presence of reality in, limited, well, in other words, when you're rece simply receiving the presence of the given into your life. And in the form of, form of yes, reality, trees, yes, buildings, yes. roads. Yep. Swami Dayananda says you must invite the presence of Ishvara into your life. You invite it. You pause, you suspend your judgment because it's, it's not something that comes natural to us. Mm. You invite the presence of reality in and you find that you become different because mm. you're no longer, you're, what, because what you're seeing, the basis of your seeing is, is that what you're looking at is the presence of reality. And you're saying the only other alternate to, to seeing reality as it is, is to be in your, your own, in my own private world of likes and dislikes, past experiences and... How, how Swami Dayananda puts it, normally we're caught up in our own world, we're not in Ishvara's world, or we're not in God's world. We're in mm. our own world. Yes. And, and he said, when you're caught in your own world, not even God can help you. No. <laughs> because, you see, what, you see, the interesting thing that Swami Dayananda talks about, which we're going to go further into this and in the applications of it later, but is that reality in itself is therapeutic. The presence of reality, when it takes up all the room in your mind, that is what is therapeutic. He, he says that mm. each is the best therapist. Yes. You know? I can understand that because when you do that and I as a wanter disappears, I can see things much more clearly. Yes. Because I'm not desperately looking for happiness from something external to myself. Yes. What happens is, is that when you can't become into a relation, see, some people would say, well, what's the point in knowing God or what's the point in it? What's the good of it? The fundamental fact is that when you come into relationship to the presence of God or presence of reality or presence of Ishvara, which is the material cause of the universe, as well as the intelligent cause, we'll go into that next time, right? But when you come into relationship with the presence of reality, you become right in yourself without any form of psychotherapeutics. Because mm. the 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 because what happens is is that what is born out of this appreciation that the presence of the given is the presence of the giver is a a sense of relaxation, being relaxed, graceful acceptance. It's a feeling of being relaxed in yourself as yourself. Now what Swami Dayananda calls this is resting, relaxing in the lap of Ishvara. Mm -hmm. And it's not some theoretical thing that when you are actually, when you are actually uh, 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 abiding in this, in this appreciation of the presence mm -hmm. of reality. So we first of all have to recognize it, and secondly we have to abide in it while we're living. Mm. And this attitude is very interesting. It's born out of the vision of reality. This mm. attitude is not a product of our psychological past. This is what's so wonderful about it. So we don't, we don't, we're not doing the attitude. No, 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 no. We're abiding in the attitude because it's a, it's a natural consequence of the, 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 of the appreciation that what we're looking at at any one moment is the appreciation of the presence of God in the form of what is here. Mm. And the interesting thing is, is that uh, as Swami Dayananda uses, which we're going to be talking about later, if if let's say that I'm caught once we once we've appreciated this as a fact, it's come alive in us as a fact, which it does do in the front of a competent teacher, right? Mm. When we're pre, what happens is we might find that we lose sight of this vision, don't we? We can easily mm. lose sight of this vision. But yeah. then what, you, you, what we use is what Swami Dayananda calls highlighting. We highlight. So here I am. I notice that I'm upset and I'm a little bit tense and I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. Right now, right here as I am, what I do is I highlight my understanding that the presence of the given is the presence of the given. I pause. I suspend my judgment. I'm not doing anything. I'm just simply abiding in the appreciation of this fact again. Does this make sense? Yeah. And then suddenly what happens is 
What happened? We're going to go. We're going to go. Suddenly, I find myself being relaxed in the lap of Ishvara. I find myself being a simple conscious being in relation to what is, and myself as this disgruntled suffering person disappears. And this is what I want to be. This is the basis of what we're going to be talking about, uh, in in this in the oncoming series of conversations. But the mm. point is this. Without the appreciation of the presence of God or the presence of Ishvara in the, li in, in the light of, of how this is unfolded by Swami Dayananda, mm -hmm. it is not possible to undergo this transformation of attitude. It's just not possible. You, like a person might be out in the trees and the bushes and, and when reality comes in and takes up all the room, even an atheist, a person who believes in God or disbelieves, it doesn't matter. It, that, 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 but they don't necessarily see the, what that means. Mm, yeah. Now, what Vedanta does is it, it, it opens up so you can see what that means. Mm. And so when we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, Vedantic practice, we're talking about once the recognition has occurred of what God is, what the presence of God is, mm -hmm. what happens is, is that what happens is every time we notice, for example, when he, every time we notice that we've moved away from this being in the lap of Ishvara, does that mm -hmm. make sense? Our practice, yeah. our practice is, first of all, recognizing honestly and fully, I've lost sight of the vision, I'm upset, I'm unhappy. Mm. And then through reacquainting ourselves and becoming, through, it's, it's always through knowledge, through appreciating the fact. Knowledge, so, that so, lifts us out of the unhappy state. Okay? So, so being alive to this vision is really um, being a receiving, accepting, being receiving, accepting, where you've you find yourself a con appreciating yourself as a conscious person, yes. and you'll turn it to, to that. Um, unfortunately, as being a resisting, rejecting um, person, which will be full of reactions and um, unhappiness. Yes, we li literally, but basically, we, uh, our, our normal story of our life is being a resistor and a fighter. Mm. Swami Dayananda calls it the ninja stance. We have a ninja stance to life. Mm. But all I wanted to point out today was this, to sum up, is that we need it. What is the basis of the transformation of our psychology, what we are? It's, a, it's the transformation of, of attitude. And this, mm. this cannot possibly happen unless there's a transformation of our way of seeing. Mm. And what is this way of seeing? It is, it is a vision that includes everything, that everything that I am looking at, everything I'm experiencing, is the presence of God in the form of that experience, positive and negative, by the way. Mm. But we're going to go into that. But the thing is that this appreciation, that, that when we find ourselves coming into appreciation of the presence of God by inviting that reality into our lives and it takes up all the room in our mind, we literally lift it up out of our suffering into the lap of Ishvara. And we feel relaxed in ourselves as ourselves. We feel content in ourselves, relatively speaking. And mm. in this relaxation, in this attitude of graceful acceptance or, or this resting in the lap or relaxing in the lap of Ishvara, all the other attitudes that tend to become active in us, in this attitude, they are all relatively resolved. Mm. So by relatively resolved, you mean they're not active? They're not active. While I'm resting in the lap of Ishvara, they're not active. They're not the absolute resolution, which, we, which, which is the subject matter of Vedanta proper. Yes. This is what we're talking about is the proper attitude. This mm. being relaxed in the lap of Ishvara yeah. is the proper attitude. And, when, mm. and, and, and we're, what we're going to be talking about is that when we engage in our daily performance of actions with this proper attitude, 
This mm. one is called Karma Yoga. Very interesting, dude. Okay. Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a rather difficult. Uh, uh, it's because it's so new. It's a, it's a difficult to approach this, but it, it is it is truly uh, Swami Dayananda's unfolding of the vision of God, and and I was listening to him every day for the last fourteen months of his teaching. I just found this. Uh, I just found it. Uh, I can't say it. it was just. It was. It was incredible. Simply because the discovery of what it means to be relaxed in the lap of Ishvara, right here, right there, as I am. Does that make sense? And that yeah. I don't have deep and dark psychological problems. My mm. my only problem is I've lost sight of the presence of God. That's my mm. problem. That I'm living mm. in isolation, alienation. That's my problem. And the moment mm. I come into relation to the presence of reality or the presence of God or the presence of Ishvara, in that very moment, I become right. Mm. Without any form of psychological meddling. Mm. Very interesting. All right. Okay, Kevin. Bye-bye. Thank you.